LSU hype. Now, everybody was a little worried early on because nobody could really figure out exactly what was going on with Brian Kelly once he got to, because he's been the head coach since, what, the end of November, early, early December? I mean, it, it's right after championship week, I believe. So early December, he has been the head coach in Baton Rouge, and everything moved incredibly slowly. The recruiting process early uh, didn't take off, which obviously early signing day, it's kind of tough when you're a first-year head coach coming in. You've only been there for a couple weeks. But, I mean, you get Frank Wilson in there. You, he has built a hell of a staff. And in the latest stuff right now, uh, they have really attacked the transfer portal. They are number two in 247's transfer portal rankings right now, right behind USC. Uh, again, he's, had, he's hired a killer staff. He's got, uh, I believe it's Corey Phillips coming over as a director of player personnel from NC State, and that is somebody that has SEC recruiting ties. Uh, he was a former head, uh, high school head coach in Nashville. Uh, hell of a hire again there. And all this stuff that's going on, obviously a lot of smoke around Caleb Williams right now with the LSU program. We thought it might be Texas A&M. Looks like it could be Caleb yeah. Williams. And Harold, I, Harold I was Perkins. trying to say nothing about it. <laughs> well, let's let me get through the rest of it. There's only one more. Harold Perkins, who is a five star linebacker, just decommitted from Texas A&M. He was a part of that big heralded recruiting class, but he did not sign uh, back, in, back in December. And hey, uh, it, it, all signs are pointing right now to LSU for him. I mean, this is what is what is going on down in Baton Rouge has been absolutely killer for that program here lately. Uh, this thing could pick up steam, you know even earlier, if they are to land Caleb Williams. Uh, give me your thoughts on uh, on your, your Baton Rouge Tigers. No, I'm excited. I've tried really hard to not get – I texted you boys last night. Like, I've, I've seen a couple of LSU guys saying, you know, we, you know we're in the running for Caleb Williams. And, I've, and I made it clear. I, I am not even listening to it until I hear somebody with, like, legit bona fide credentials bring it up or talk about it. And it, it, it is an LSU beat writer. And so I take that for what it is. But he did point out in his report yesterday that I, that I was texting you guys about that Caleb Williams was down to Oklahoma or LSU in his original recruiting last year as a freshman. And we were, we were the other school he was going to go to if he didn't go to Lincoln Riley anyway. Um, I, I think a lot of the hot seat with O ran him off. I think he made the smartest decision he ever could have made um, going and playing under Lincoln Riley, and that's fine. I think if he goes and stays with Lincoln, that's great and good for him. But I've said this, every day that goes by is a bad day for USC. Oh, most certainly. Most because, certainly. And, 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 I, and I'm the one that brought up the A&M factor. Why would you not go to A&M if you're Caleb Williams and you're looking at the roster, you're looking at the talent, and they really are, I think they are a quarterback away from being a national championship team. I don't know if LSU is or not. I'd love to think that and hope that. Caleb Williams absolutely changes that, though. And you're right. What Brian Kelly's doing has has me all kind of fired up and has me so excited for the direction of my, my, my program. We've got a guy in there that actually knows how to build a staff and how to run a program. He actually has a plan for all of these things. And the first thing that happened when he got there was everybody made fun of him. This guy from Boston who spent the last decade of his life in the Midwest is going to come into the SEC, not just the SEC, but in Louisiana, the most talent-rich state in the South per capita. And, you know, these guys all need Louisiana kids to stay home. Oh, and yeah. how are you going to get a guy from Boston to do that? How And, and uh, easily. I'm just going to hire everybody who is the big-name person from here that's really good at their job. Yes. It's it's kind of easy to do when you look at it that way, right? <laughs> like, like, he didn't have – here's the best thing about it. He didn't have any ego to him whatsoever. I'm bad at this. I'm going to go get that guy. He did the same thing at Notre Dame, by the way, okay? What was hurting him at Notre Dame was he finally made a, a BCS title and, and, and a couple of playoffs. And he realized, my best recruiting is not getting these guys. I have to go out and get an elite recruiter. 
And he did. And he went and got a D.C. from Cincinnati that is an absolute elite recruiter in Marcus Freeman. Okay? And, and he, he understands what his flaws are more than he understands, you know, what he what he's good at. I think that's invaluable. I just think that's invaluable. Oh, it most certainly is. It most certainly is. What what he has done in Baton Rouge thus far, I, I mean, what, what you've had at LSU – is Les Miles and Ed Orgeron, two guys that uh, are a lot of fun and yeah. really fun guys to to cheer for and to pull for. But the further you get away from when Nick Saban kind of came in and revitalized the program and kind of gave some structure, the further you get away from that, uh, you've seen all the things that have happened. Uh, well, it's been fifteen years field. of no structure, right? It's been it's been head coaches that know how to recruit, they know how to rah rah guys, they know how to get you fired up, they can sell the shit out of you. Oh, yeah. But, but they do it with flash, and they do it with with mannerisms, and they do it with, you know, Ed Orgeron. I love Ed to death. If Ed Orgeron going to rest on an alligator and break his jaw and, and you know, <laughs> put, a, put a worm in his mouth, and, and, and people are going to think, this is a crazy son of a bitch that I want to play for. But there's nothing to, that's just performative. Like, that, that doesn't actually do anything. How... How are you making us better? Well, I'm going to wake up tomorrow and I'm going to whoop a man's ass and I'm going to do Oh, that, that's all fun and that's all great. And it works on 17 and 18-year-olds. But at some point in time, I need to know your plan. Well, and there was no plan. You know, <laughs> sometimes waking up and whooping a man's ass ain't really the plan you think it is. Exactly. It, uh, who knows? Who knows? And It's fun. Yeah. It's great when we have the arguments about whose coach can kick whose ass. It's always fun to be on top of that. Now we're—I'm going to bet we're on the bottom of that in the SEC. <laughs> but if we win football games, I don't care. Exactly. I, don't care. I needed my coach to be able to beat your coach's ass. I needed him because we couldn't beat Joe Smith. That's a <laughs> It's a lot more fun to win ball games than it is to win arguments, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. And and here's the thing. Let's be real careful about this. I have no idea where LSU is on the pantheon of what we look like next year. I don't know how much of any of this is going to work. I don't know how much any of these guys are ready that, that he's bringing in. I don't know. I know this. At defense, we are completely inept right now at linebacker and secondary. I've never said that before in my life of being an LSU fan since I was in the ninth grade. Never, never said those words. Okay. But right now, if we had to go play a football game this week, we do not have enough guys that are capable of playing at a Division One level at the linebacker or secondary position. I think you've got right? enough guys to play D1 level. I don't think you've got enough to play SEC level, and that's the problem, right? Oh, I don't. Like, I, I would. I would worry about the Memphises and 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 you know. Oh yeah, I mean, the, absolutely. The, the the Fresno State. Like, I, like I'm telling you, it ain't just SEC, and it ain't just. You know, P five. I would, I would worry considerably about those games, but, but we don't play next week. That's that's the beauty of it. We don't play next week. I'm okay. We're all right. Hey, you, uh, you know who LSU opens with, right? Oh God, yes. And I'm, I'm, I'm not looking forward to. I'm looking forward to next year. I, you you I brought up Memphis. Breath. It's for for anybody listening. It's Florida State in uh in the Superdome. Yeah. So <laughs> no, I will I will hold my I will hold my breath. Here's the thing. I, I, I think we're better than Florida State right now. I think we've been better than Florida State for a while. I I I, I don't know how long we're gonna be better than them unless unless all of this that Brian's doing works. I, I have high hopes. We'll say that. But the hype right now oh, I do too. is, oh, is no, really, I've really got, good. Got um but I do believe it's going to take a little bit of time to to get everything fully gelling the way it you know the way a championship program operates and it and we've seen this with even the best of coaches is it takes two to three years to really get things up and rolling and uh, I mean Nick Saban won his uh, first national title at Alabama in his third season uh, but he had it turned around in year two and that's kind of what I'm expecting here I think uh, I don't think with the I don't think with the transfer portal you've got to do that anymore though I mean we just saw Mel Tucker walk into one of the worst coaching situations possible, and in and in one full season the next year, he's he's in legit competition for the Big Ten title. 
Right, and that's what I'm saying, right? It, it, he did it in in his second season. I think Brian Kelly's second season is when you'll really, really see strides. They're going to beat somebody that they probably shouldn't beat this year, and they'll lose to somebody that they probably shouldn't lose to. And that's, well, that's the way these see, first years Once go. again, that's all pending on talent. If they end up getting Caleb Williams, Gary, I don't know that. Uh, that's, uh, you you I, have a point. I, like, I think with the transfer portal, they can solve the linebacker position and and the, the DB position and, and, and by, by, by signing day, and, and we're fine. Like, 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 I'm not saying we're going to win the national title, but I'm just saying we're now in legit competition to win games now. Like, sure. like 10 win seasons are realistic if we can make that move. Without him, oh, no. Yeah, they could, they could win nine games. They could win four games. I don't know. Like, I, 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 I will tell you this. They will not, uh, they will not be four and eight this year. Uh, I think the floor well, is six and six. I think uh, I think there's a chance they could end up, you know, eleven and one somewhere around there. So oh, the SEC is just so tough right now, Gary. Oh, it is. The SEC, yes. so that, like Arkansas is not going backwards. Like we we took. I got an Arkansas friend that was giving me shit because LSU took two secondary guys from them in the transfer portal. But then they took they took our best starter. I think it's, we got a but we got two guys that are going to fight and 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 I think they're going to be potential starters or a lot of playing time. You just took a first round draft pick, all right? Which one would you rather have? That's true. The, the two guys that might play or the guy that's going to play on Sundays if he doesn't get hurt. I, I'm I'm a hundred percent with you. Yes, I'm a hundred percent with you. Uh, but at the same time, as good as Arkansas was this year, even a beaten down LSU team. Uh, still was within three points of them. I mean, it, it, like, oh, but I think we're going to be within three points of everybody, though, Gary. That's what like, I'm saying. I don't, yeah, I, you know, I, I, but I think the SEC is going to be that. I mean, I just don't see a lot of ass kicking. Okay, no, like I don't know what Ole Miss looks like because so I think Matt Corral was so important to that team. I don't know what they're going to look like at all. But like, I think State is going to be considerably better than they were. Like, I think Auburn and 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 Ole Miss could take a step back. But I think everybody else is taking a step forward. And when we were DFL in the SEC, West, especially, like, okay, like, all right, we might we might step over two guys that beat us, but that's not a real real hard, you know, hill to climb. No, you're you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Uh the last thing I'll say, the uh, the latest on Caleb Williams. Wisconsin hired Bobby Ingram, who's the tight ends coach from the Baltimore Ravens, as their new offensive coordinator. Uh, Billy Embody, who covers LSU and SMU for On3.com, uh, he posted, not that anybody should really care, but very interesting turn here. I switched my crystal ball pick to Wisconsin for Caleb Williams. Uh, he said, Badgers hiring Bobby Ingram is expected to turn things to them. Crazy. So... Uh, we'll see about that. Um, now, like I said, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. I don't see this kid going up to play Midwestern football. Like, I just, I just don't see that. I don't see him. He wants to go somewhere that will help him in the NFL. Now, I don't know that Brian Kelly has a track record of putting quarterbacks in the NFL, but he's also never had a quarterback as good as Caleb Williams. Agreed. Um, so so that's, a, that's a part of it. You know, I, I'm just going to tell you, that that Wisconsin ain't ain't where you're going to be a quarterback in the NFL. Okay, agreed. I I, I, I think, think of it the exact same coach, way. You know my opinion. Yeah. I love Wisconsin. I think that head coach is going backwards. I think that program is going backwards. Now maybe this OC hire will be a big deal and it will put you know project them forward a lot. I love this team. This was this was the Big Ten team of my youth, man. This was the Big Ten team that I love my whole childhood. Oh yeah, and and. I I just don't I don't like Paul Chris. I I I used to, but I've seen him regress. I, I will I will tell you. Uh, I will tell you who does like Paul Chris, and that is Caleb Williams' dad. Has a fantastic relationship with Paul Chris. So uh, we'll see. You know, it's it, all this stuff is very interesting. Very very interesting. So who who knows where? Well, they, I would imagine every, every day that goes by is a bad day for Lincoln. Yeah, you got that right. The if he does not announce USC by Friday, which would be the twenty eighth, uh, that is when classes start for USC. So we'll see, we'll see. Uh, if he doesn't announce by then, then I would imagine he will end up elsewhere. Uh, but as it is right now, I mean, 
I don't, I don't know where he's going to get into class uh, early enough right well, now. I, well, I definitely – well, I mean, <laughs> uh, so, like, you and I know this. If he chooses Wisconsin or LSU, like, get him in a class, it ain't going to be hard. Okay? No, These are state in. schools in, like, dumb, dumb states. Okay? Yeah. This, this, is, this is not the, the Ivy League here of academics. Now, I know we all like to think that our schools are great academic institutions. They're not, all right? They're not. Some of them are. Some of them are highly rated as that, and I give them great credit for that. But for the most part, these state schools don't like that, and they can get anybody in anywhere they need. You got that right. I was the old man with guys that I could barely read, and I wasn't an athlete. I didn't bring anything to the table, okay? I, I, I literally could read it like a fifth grade level, and I got an old man, and I did fun, okay? <laughs> I was in classes with athletes, baseball players, basketball players, football players that bonafidely could not read. <laughs> they did just fine, by the way. All of course, of they all passed. Fine. I mean, some of them were on the, yeah. uh, on the academic honor roll, right? Like the yeah. <laughs> academic honor so, roll. Oh, yeah, no, no doubt. No <laughs> doubt. So, so this is, this is but, so when guys, now, Florida, Florida doesn't play those games. Michigan, Michigan doesn't play those games, all right? And, and maybe they might start to, but they don't. But if you, let's, let's not kid ourselves about can we get him into school so he can whatever. Getting him into school ain't going to be hard as long as he chooses to stay. You got that right. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.